signing in, joining us. Um, I have a panel of a few experts here. I'm going to talk a little bit about real estate. Uh, I've been doing real estate for about eight years. Uh, I've done over 50 million in sales, in New York area. I'm going to also um, have uh, Jason Ramirez from Citizens Bank talk about what he's been seeing in the uh, the mortgage market. And then I'm going to have JR talk about insurance. He's going to just tell us what he's been seeing lately. Then we're going to have Dustin Cohen, uh, an attorney. He's going to talk to us about what he's seeing in closings and stuff. And then we're going to have uh, Howard Hensel, or I call him Howard Hotel Hensel. He's going to talk about some deals that are in condo developments right now. And, uh, and then I'm going to have Dondre Roberts, who's a leasing specialist. He works for one of the top landlords in New York. He can answer any questions you may have regarding rentals. So let's get started right now. So basically what we've been seeing in the news is um, that the, the housing prices have gone down from 20 to 30 percent on a national average. Now, that's not going to help us here in New York. When they're talking national average, they're talking states like, you know, that includes New Mexico, Arizona, North Dakota, you know, Nevada. You know, they don't really have a lot of skyscrapers over there because they don't need to build them high. They need to build them wide, you know, because they have plenty of supply, they have plenty of land, and not much demand. New York is different. New York always has a lot of demand. We're basically an island. We build it high because we can't build it wide. We have no space to build it east or west. We build it north to south. And basically, there's a lot of demand because the type of buyers that we attract. New York is a very diverse economy. We have the world leaders here. We have the United Nations here. You have diplomats who are looking to buy. You have basically uh, royalty looking to buy, trust fund babies looking to buy, the working man here is looking to buy. You have uh, young professionals, old professionals. You have industry leaders like sports teams, uh, entertainment, fashion, uh, new te you know, technology companies. So it's a very, very diverse job market that basically br brings in a lot of people who need to buy eventually, you know. So basically what we're going to focus on today is the uh, people buying single units, single homes in New York or the surrounding neighborhoods. So basically on, um, on that respect, um, we're going to talk about you have investors. Uh, people who are looking to invest, basically, I'm talking to the investors, more of an uh, international guy who's looking to buy one unit. He's usually paying cash, and basically he's looking for appreciation, and he's looking to take his money out of the bank. He's not making no interest in the bank, and he's looking to make some money on rental interest. So that particular buyer can go, has a bigger geographic, geographical area, you know. So, he, and, and there's deals out there for them, especially if they're paying buying cash. But what I want to focus on mostly right now today is I want to focus on the new home buyer or a, first pers a person who's looking to buy a home and living there. So basically, how do we find a deal in this market? All right. So it comes out, I got four simple rules on how you find a deal. Basically, number one, you got to narrow down your search. Looking at the news and listening to 20, 30% is not going to help you if you're buying in New York City. So you want to narrow down your search to a neighborhood or to a couple of block area couple of blocks. The second thing is price, obviously, you want to get a good price. The third is the mortgage rate, which is very important, which we're going to go over. And the fourth is a safeguard. Safeguard yourself. Make sure that you have the right clauses in your contract to make sure you're protected if it should be, if it should turn out to be a bad deal. So let's talk about narrowing the search. When it comes down to narrowing the search, you basically need to know what you're looking to, what you're, what you're looking to buy. So you want to live in a uh, walk-up, you want to live in a uh, full-service building. You know, what's important to you? What does the apartment need to have? Where the location? Do you need easy access to get to work? Um, basically, what's your time frame when you're looking to buy? And what, what can you afford? Yeah. Your, what price can you afford? So that's the basic questions. Once you, you know that, you can start looking at inventory. Now, when you start looking at inventory, you have to understand, in New York, you're not going to find 40 uh, 41 bedrooms in a two, three block area. You're going to find two to six, two to eight. So you're never going to have a lot of inventory. So keep that in mind. So once you narrow it down, you look at some inventory for a few months and you narrow it down to like, um, to like an apartment, the next, the next step you start to go, you start to, uh, start to negotiate the price. So basically what happens is 
you're using a real realtor, I always recommend it. Basically, what I do is I basically run comparables, comps, to see what the price is. So let's use, we're going to use for today, $1 million price point, which is basically, uh, it's a neat, nice even number. So if we find a, an apartment, one bedroom for a $1 million, the area you want, basically, and we negotiated and we get a deal at $950,000. At that point, it looks like you have $50,000 in equity because the comparables are saying $1 million. Right now, deals are getting done at 5% below ask. And basically, it's not un it's not a uh, it's not unrealistic to get a deal like that. At that point, we go to the mortgage rate. Now, this is where it gets a little bit tricky. On the um, I'm going to share my screen for a second. So on uh, so on the mortgage rate, I made a simple graph so everybody can take a look at. It. So the rule of thumb on mortgages is basically. This graph is going to display what your monthly cost is going to be. So what my arrow is on $1 million purchase. If the mortgage rate is 3.2% and the maintenance is $12,000 for the year, you're looking at $4,710 as a monthly mortgage payment with maintenance included. If the interest rate, if you wait a little bit longer and the banks start upping the interest rate, it goes to 4.2%. So now the seller is going to drop the price to 950000 At that point, your mortgage payment will be $4,967, even if he drops the price to nine fifty. If he should go to 5.2%, and basically the price goes down to $900,000, you're basically looking at $5,204 of monthly payments. That's $6,000. That's $500 more. At 5,204 compared to 4,710, so 6,000 more a year you're going to be you're going to be paying in mortgage payments. So basically, now what's a good deal? I would say if you can get a million dollar apartment for 950, they get it at a 3.2 percent mortgage rate or somewhere around there. I I would say that's a pretty good deal. So let me get off that screen. So basically, once the mortgage is done, you want to safeguard. You want to safeguard your um your um your property so basically that's the contract we have an accepted offer we bring out the attorney we negotiate the contract what we want we want mortgage contingent which basically means that if you do not if the mortgage does not approve the loan you get your deposit back that is super important then the bank brings an appraiser to appraise it now if the bank appraises it at a million and you pay 950 that's a good deal if the bank appraises it at 900,000 you're paying 950 that's a bad deal and then at that point, it's better just to not take the apartment and walk away from the deal. It's your attorney's job to put clauses in it to get out of it. If the bank, if the bank basically shows that it's worth not that, if it's not worth as much as you thought it was, or if the price is drastically dropped. So that gives you some basic protection on um, on um, on that. And basically, to um, the risk you have. Of, um, of waiting too long is that basically if the, what a lot of people do they're waiting for the bottom and here's the thing nobody knows the bottom not the not the smart guys in the financial sector nobody knows what the bottom is and when you finally find out what the bottom is it's like three to six months after after it hits CNN finally reports oh yeah the bottom in the last quarter which was three months ago was nine hundred and forty thousand dollars and you're like oh you know what I'm saying? Now you want to buy it? You tell me, hey, I want to buy it for 940. It's no longer available. It already sold. It sold three months ago, and now the new inventory coming out is not necessarily going to be at the same price. A lot of times it starts to go back up because sellers stop selling. If they don't get the price they want, they just rent out their place, and then they, you get less and less and less inventory. So the risk of waiting uh, to buy, to wait for the bottom, that nobody knows what the bottom is going to be, is dangerous because at that point you aren't building any equity. The interest rates might go too high, or it might be you can't afford to pay for the monthly, or the bank might stop lending altogether if they don't like what they see in the market. And then at that point, you can't buy anything, and then you have to rent. And then when that happens, the rents start to go up, and you start paying more for rent, and you're not building any equity. So I'm going to wrap up with this. I'll give you a quick story. I bought my place. I had a small studio. I bought. 2007 in the peak of the last in the peak of the market back then I paid 550 
in 2008, the market dropped. It went down to 540. Then I held on to it. I wasn't at work. It only dropped 10,000 because I got it appraised. But then in 2011, I wound up selling it for 610,000. So that's like $60,000 of profit. So uh, buying in New York is a long term, you know, it's basically, you don't want to time the market. You want to have time in the market. So you want to hold on to something. Three to five years, you should make some good money. You should have some good appreciation and you should build some good equity. So now that's all I have to say. I'm going to turn it over to Jason. Uh, Jason, I know you can hear me. So basically, if you could tell us a little bit about, you're, you're a loan officer for Citizens Bank. If you could tell me a little bit about what you're seeing in the market would be, uh, would be great. And also if you tell me a little bit, and also you could talk a little bit about 